In this spectacular game of Tears of the Kingdom, we could say that the physics and engineering aspect of this game has surpassed its expectation by a landslide. Players have been going way over the top with these builds, coming up with new ideas every day, competing against each other to see who could create the best builds, or who could first create a build that could accomplish this or that task first. So out of all the incredible builds that I've witnessed throughout the past couple months, I've noticed that the recent builds that players have been creating, especially aircrafts and sea builds, have been all operated by an electric motor fan, which is a combination of two or three materials. It goes as follows. The propeller, motor, and the battery, which is optional. And these materials are only accessible by stealing them from a shrine. But in this video, I'm going to be going over some of the pros and cons that I've experienced of having an electric motor fan attached to my build with the battery and without the battery and the different ways that you could use these materials separately. Because even though they work hand in hand, as I said, you can use them individually. But before we jump into this video, if you find this video helpful at all, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so you won't miss out on anything. Or if not, let me know in the comments on what I missed out or what I can improve on because I really appreciate the feedback. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first thing we're going to be talking about is the battery, which has a fairly simple use and that's basically to reserve your battery power. The battery conducts electricity. So once the battery is fully charged up with juice, it will give power to your bill so that it could operate on its own without using your battery power. But at least it tries. I've tried multiple methods to try to get the propeller to move the big wheels with just the shrine battery alone, but it never works. It seems like the wheels may have a locking mechanism that prevents them from spinning unless they're activated. So the propeller is unable to move the vehicle no matter how much force it has. And you can see it's packing up a lot of wind back there. So, you know, it, it's really pushing. And I noticed the wheels have a tendency to sneak off on their own as soon as you take your eyes off them, but don't want to move when the force of two propellers are pushing them. Slick bastards. I decided to try it with the small wheels to see how they would react, but no success. Matter of fact, they were even worse since they can't take much weight. But bro, once those manual wheels hit the ground, they were gone. So we see the battery works pretty well with manual wheels, aircrafts, and sea bills. So don't give up on them just yet. The propellers. I don't even think I have to go over what a propeller is. Because we all know what a propeller is. And it also speaks for itself. But I'll still give you a brief description on how they work in this game and show you some of the different ways they can be used on your build. So in order for a propeller to work, it needs to be attached to a device that can rotate on its own. And that could either be a big wheel or a motor. If you decide to go with the wheels, I always recommend two wheels because as you can see, one wheel doesn't really give you much thrust power. And you could always add two propellers as well to increase the power. But as you can see, the motor is still much more powerful. Now, if you really just love the big wheels and you want to keep up with the speed of the motor, you could try adding a third one. But then you may end up with bills like this or this which is actually better if you have enough space but nevertheless it's still not necessary in my opinion so i want to go back and touch on what happened earlier and why the wheels flew up in the air unlike the motor that only has one rotation access point the wheel has two which is why you could use them on both sides of a vehicle or a build and the motor only on one but we'll get into that further on in the video now i'm not sure about the whole metrics behind the wheel because I am just experimenting on it and I'm not going to try to get into all that in this video but I noticed that because the wheel has multiple access points depending on which way you fuse the wheels to each other they will affect how the other wheels spin which will ultimately affect how the propellers spin. I find it works best by turning one wheel in the opposite direction therefore countering the spin of the other wheel which allows for a better rotation of the propeller rather than having the two wheels turn the same way you just get a little jumpy when you and remember when I said things could get really tricky with the wheel? Well, here's a perfect example. Although the two wheels are turned in opposite directions, 
you can see the top wheel isn't spinning because the rotating gear for the bottom wheel is attached to the stone tablet or whatever that thing is which prevents the rotation of the upper wheel for some reason now if you switch it around here's what happens as you can see it works now but enough talk let's see what it looks like on the road pretty smooth <laughs> Now let's talk about uphill power. If you're looking to create a build that could go up steep, steep, steep terrains, then the propeller is your guy. Now I know the propeller was more than strong enough to get me up the hill. The only reason why the Jeep cut out is because the hill was getting too steep and because there's not enough weight in the front to keep the front of the vehicle down as you can see boom, it will tip over also link will automatically let go of the steering wheel once it gets too steep as well without a stabilizer so since that was the case i was actually able to stick a stabilizer right in the back of my jeep and it worked pretty well well at least to get up the hill because afterwards it seemed to have moved some parts around and the wheels were struggling to turn at times, but it still would work. It was actually able to get up this hill right here. The bottom line is the propeller gives you more than enough thrust to get your vehicle up the hill. You could use one, but I always like to use two for the extra push. As you saw, I do use the motor on my Jeep because it looks cool and it's also way too light in the front to use these heavy wheels. But on my tank, I use two wheels. It may not be as strong as the motor, but it will give you enough thrust to get up a hill. If you are having issues getting up the hill with a propeller, like in this case, it's probably because your vehicle isn't high enough and the front of your vehicle is touching the hill. And if you thought about what would happen if you use a regular fan or just one wheel with a propeller, don't even bother because you won't get anywhere going up a hill. Now I think I said too much about the propeller and I'm actually tired of talking about the propeller. But I know a lot of you love aircrafts so here's a few clips. And I totally forgot to mention that you could actually use propellers on a flux core. The thrust isn't as strong as a motor but they get the job done. And they could actually spin on their own when you attach your steering wheel on an angle perpendicular to the direction your vehicle is facing. Which require no battery power at all, neither yours nor the shrine battery, as seen in the video. But that's enough about the propeller. And for the motor, I'll try to keep it fairly simple, because there's not that much to say about it. We already know that the motor, it has the strongest torque than any other device in the game and will give your vehicle or any object that's attached to it the spin that it needs to get up and rolling. It's light, powerful, and doesn't really use too much of your battery. But there is one major downside to it. For some reason, it tends to rain a lot in Hyrule. I think we all know where I'm going with this. As we all knew since first grade, or even before if your mama told you. Water and electricity just don't mix. So when it starts to rain and that lightning starts to strike, you better hope you have that rubber suit or shock resistant armor on or ready to book it the hell out of there. And if you want to travel across the sea using the motor, you can. Just don't let it touch the water. But before I end this video, I just want to mention one thing that I recently discovered about the motor and that is you could actually use the rotating mechanism on the motor as an axle to spin your wheels much faster. The downside is you only could use it on one side of your vehicle. Like I mentioned earlier, unlike the big wheel that has two rotation points, the motor only has one, meaning it rotates in the same direction no matter which way you turn it. Now, if you're not that technical and your eyes are tricking you, making them seem like they're rotating in different directions because they're on opposite sides of each other. Well, they're not. They're actually rotating in the same direction, which is a clockwise rotation. And let me show you. If you took this motor 
and turned it on the other side, it would be going in the same direction. Right? Right. Which would cause it to do this. But there is a way you could get around it, which could be quite tricky. Anyways, I'm extremely bored now, and I'm pretty sure you guys are too. I really didn't mean for the video to be this long. I just have a habit of getting technical with things. But I hope you gained something from this video. Anyways, I'm done. You could check out these remaining clips to see the possibilities or potential of using the motor as your axle or whatever you want to call it. Hopefully you'll be able to take these ideas and build something really cool from them. But I'll see you in the next. Peace out.